For decades, Muslim apologists have assured us that the Quran has been perfectly preserved, right down to the letter, and that there are no differences anywhere in the entire manuscript history of the Quran. They put this forward as their favorite miracle of Islam. But it was all a lie. Muslim apologists were relying on what I call Islam's 99-1 rule. Muslim apologists have always understood that if they're speaking to a hundred people, at least 99 of those 100 people are going to mindlessly accept whatever they're told. At most, only one will bother to investigate. And if one person realizes that Muslim apologists are lying, the 99 can silence the one. Unfortunately for Muslim apologists who rely on Islam's 99-1 rule to spread lies for their religion, the internet has allowed critics of the false claims to spread facts faster than Muslim apologists can spread lies. So we've been seeing the myth of perfect preservation crumble before our eyes, as critics of the myth show that there are tens of thousands of textual differences in Quran manuscripts, and that there are dozens of different Arabic Qurans, and that the first generation of Muslims were reciting so many different versions of the Quran, the Caliph Uthman had to gather all of the Qurans together and burn them. So, what do Muslim apologists do when their lie has been exposed? They tell another lie. That's what liars do. The new lie is that even though the text of the Quran has been repeatedly corrupted, and even though there are dozens of different Arabic Qurans being used in different parts of the world, the Quran has been perfectly preserved through the infallible tool of human memory. This, of course, is extremely stupid. The idea that Muslims couldn't manage to write down the same Quran, but that they would all memorize it perfectly, is beyond ridiculous. The idea that Muslims in different parts of the world are reading different versions of the Quran, but memorizing the same Quran, is idiotic in the extreme. So why are Muslim apologists making this claim? Well, they always seem to make claims that they hope no one will investigate. They say, there isn't a single textual variant in any manuscript in the entire history of the Quran, because they're hoping that no one will actually bother to check. Whenever someone does bother to check, Muslim apologists tell a new lie, hoping that no one will check the new lie. But they make each successive lie more difficult to check, hoping to wear everyone out with lies until we just give up on fact-checking. So they'll keep telling the lie of perfect memory until someone gets so fed up with it that he goes to different parts of the world and records Muslims reciting their different Qurans in different ways, proving that Muslims are even memorizing different Qurans. In the meantime, however, I wanted to point out a problem with the latest lie of Muslim apologists. It's a problem that goes all the way back to Muhammad's companions. How many Muslims in the world today have memorized the entire Quran? Millions? Of course not. Thousands? Not even thousands. Hundreds? Try again. How many Muslims in the world today have memorized the entire Quran? Zero. In Abu Ubaid's Kitab Fada'al al-Quran, we read, Ismail ibn Ibrahim related to us from Ayyub, from Nafi, from Ibn Umar, who said, Let none of you say, I have learned the whole of the Quran. For how does he know what the whole of it is, when much of it has disappeared? Let him rather say, I have learned what is extant thereof. That is, I've only learned what has survived. Ibn Umar was a companion of Muhammad. He was the son of the rightly guided Caliph Umar. And he tells the next generation of Muslim reciters who are rising up that they should never claim to have memorized the entire Quran because much of it has disappeared. At first, Muslims relied primarily on memory to preserve the Quran. They would write down passages on leaves or rocks or bones, but these written fragments were simply aids to memory you would write something down to help you memorize it. Memorization was still the primary method of preserving and passing on the Quran. How did that work out? It was a disaster. Entire chapters of the Quran were lost because Muhammad's companions were too lazy to recite them. 
Large passages were lost because the only people who had them memorized died in battle. Muslims would recite verses differently because they had memorized them differently. And they would accuse each other of changing the revelations. After much of the Quran was lost, the first of the rightly guided caliphs, Abu Bakr, decided to have someone write down what was left of the Quran so that more of it wouldn't be lost. In other words, Abu Bakr realized that a single written copy of the Quran was better than the fallible memories of the entire Muslim community combined. Other Muslims started writing down their Qurans from memory, and they ended up having so many different versions of the Quran that Caliph Uthman had to order everyone to hand over their Qurans so that he could burn them all. Hence, the first generation of Muslims learned the hard way that one person telling the next person to pass on entire chapters of a book from memory is a terrible way to preserve a text. The cost of this early stupidity was that much of the Quran was lost and that no one in the world could ever again say that he had memorized the entire Quran. So when a Muslim apologist tells you that the textual differences in various Quran versions and Quran manuscripts don't matter because so many Muslims have memorized the entire Quran, you should quickly reply that no Muslim has memorized the entire Quran because no Muslim even knows what the entire Quran is. Why does no Muslim know what the entire Quran is? because the early Muslim community relied primarily on memorization to preserve the Quran. And human memory is a terrible way to preserve an entire book. Myths are being shattered, my friends. Lies are being exposed. So if your ideology relies on myths and lies to prop it up, welcome to Panic Town. Population, you.